my name is um, Danielle Gigi. That's me with the yellow hair behind you there. And that is my glorious band who I adore and miss, um, Gigi Allen Partridge, who I haven't seen since March, last March. Um, so I play in them. Um, I've played in loads of bands over the years because I am old. Um, and also involved with like trying to run events, various other music projects with people. Uh, had a couple of things up in little art shows, like just weird artwork. What else do I do? I make this kind of thing <laughs> and um, I, I dance in my garage. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. And, and, and like me, you, uh, you have a fetish, fetish for the old oil. Um... Oh, yes, this is my, um, at the beginning of lockdown, I am um, so the very beginning in March I was like how am I going to cope without going out like I, I was out like three times a week so I bought this oil projector and I, I made my garage into a kind of crappy little nightclub just for myself <laughs> but it's been a sanity saver for sure I bet I bet I kind of we got out houses that are just in disarray that I well I did I did I started converting the summer house um uh, but then I got attacked by wasps. So that, oh that, yeah, that, yeah, that wasn't that wasn't your best summer, was it? No, so the wasp saga. So, um, tell us a little bit about this lot. It's like, like the first thing I ever I, before I heard your music, I just heard the name Gigi Allen Park, <laughs> and I just thought, can that really be? Um, a bizarre mix of Gigi Allen and Alan Partridge, and um, you didn't disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> well um yeah we wanted the name to to sum up kind of the ridiculousness of the band because at the time there was a lot of and it's really good that bands aspire to you know get on radio one and um be famous in a mainstream way but my heart's always been with like the punk scene and the weirdos and people who were doing stuff like for a different reason just for expression and performance and not that I'm saying that's better just that's what I enjoy that's what I like seeing and that's what I like being a part of and at the time there was a lot of um indie bands a lot of guys um you know doing very clean nice poppy indie stuff and I felt myself going to these gigs and I was standing there and I was just like I'm so bored I just want to see like a girl going mad up there and then I remember you know there's that phrase which is be the change you want to see in the world and I think it's meant to apply to recycling and saving turtles and stuff but I was like wait I'm gonna to have to do it because no one else is gonna do it. Um, and then it became a really interesting project to do with friendship and confidence because the reason no girls were up there doing it, not there is female musicians, but the reason there was nothing so brash and, and ridiculous is because um, a lot of women were cautious about um, being in a band in such a male dominated scene in other towns and cities that there is like pockets of little DIY um, gangs that are a bit more welcoming uh to to women and trans and non-binary people and it just felt like Teesside was just get, it was just a bit normal and then we ended up being part of this synchronicity of like loads of weirdos just started to come out of the the woodwork at, at the same time all sort of encouraging each other so there was things going on at pineapple bark there was yourself um and it's such a shame because just as lockdown started it felt like there was this really cool little like factory-esque scene of artists and musicians who weren't doing it to to get on radio one who were just living their weird lives together and all cross-pollinating and inspiring each other and hanging out and and it was great and I was you know I've lived in Teesside my whole life and for the first time I felt really part of something and like I don't want to call it a scene because that's a bad word but you know what I mean a gang a good gang <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to avoid the the word scene because uh, it is a poxy word, but I guess it kind of describes, you know, it's just like something, multiple things start happening at the same time. And yeah. There's a resonance between them. And yeah, that was, you know, um, it it all just seemed to be, like you say, factory. Um, it's like discovering, like Disgraceland was just incredible and Pineapple Black and, uh, and Base Camp, but the auxiliary for me was just like fun. Mm -hmm you know this is this is really something it could be you know that could catalyze the scene in the way that cbgb's did for new york um all that space the fact that it's a 24 7 thing um yeah so excited to for what's going to happen when when we get back in there um uh but yeah it was 
it was really something. It was really, really exciting. And I don't think we're going to lose that. One of the best things about this, you know, six month interview project is seeing people's resilience and determination and the plotting and scheming and growth that's been happening behind. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, once we're allowed out there, we're really going to, you know, it's not, it's not going to have been uh, diminished or destroyed in any way. It's, we're going to hit the ground running. Yeah, definitely. Like weirdos don't go away. Um, Gigi, we had a lot of plans in the band that did get um, trashed by uh, the pandemic. So we had plans for an album. We had a label that we really liked that was interested and we had like a tour on the cards and it was just about to sort of level up into us being um, more active and more focused. <laughs> and more perfect not not professional but you know work, working more and and then it just ended and you know I, I spent about six months just mourning that and not doing anything I didn't want to do anything creative I was just I was too too hurt and and I'm too invested in in performance like I love music obviously but I realized that what I really miss about miss about gigs is the energy the atmosphere and, and performance it's more the theater of it that I actually miss which is why I've ended up doing various projects from home, which allow me to dress up, perform, you know, things like that That from home. It's not the same and it'll never be the same. But like you say, I feel like when we get back to it, there, there is this pent up energy. And also we're just going to, I appreciate it anyway. Like I didn't take it for granted, but once we're back out there, like I, <laughs> like, I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> in fact I did um there was that brief window where there was a gig a socially distanced gig at base camp and it was dead naked hippies did a uh just two of them did a really stripped back set and just hear it this sounds like so hippie-ish but yeah they can listen to music at home and you can listen to music on your headphones but there's nothing the same as hearing amplified sound waves like bounce around a big room and travel through your body and I just it was she was just playing a drum machine off her phone but even that coming through PA I was like oh. <laughs> it really affected me so I know that when I get back to um gigs and seeing people it's just it's going to feel really different but in a, in a, in a good way um we're slightly worried about some of the venues obviously and how they're they're coping I think that's that's really awful um that's been my biggest um concern through all of this but I think we I think we're going to be okay um it's Graceland, I think, was my biggest worry, um, and Shanty Cafe. Um, but we, you know, I'm, I'm, there's absolutely no way I'm letting anything happen to to either. Mm -hmm. of, like, absolute determination, whatever it takes. Yeah, we, I had a, a club night planned for this Graceland as well, um, just before it closed. Uh, me and Jane were talking about it, um, and then <laughs> naively, when I bought this in March I was like oh when the clubs are open in another couple of months I can take this and use it <laughs> I just didn't think it was going to be a year it's surreal it is yeah the way it's you know didn't have to be like this but it is um mm -hmm. time we have taken uh Donny Jevs has donated the sound system to the auxiliary uh, <gasps> wow it was absolutely incredible to get down there and just you know have music on proper loud so it's like mm -hmm force you know there's only five of us in in an eleven thousand square foot um warehouse um but yeah that's how i feel it's like you know manchester had a factory and we've got warehouse so you know we the, the it's uh it's, god yeah can't wait to get get back there so look tell us a little bit about the other creative things that you do like uh, creative like that in, what is that crochet ballet we got rocking there. yeah it's um it's a it's all it's a it's um a wrestling map wrestling <laughs> a wrestling mask it's based on the um lucha libre mask just loosely based on um really interested i watched a documentary which is um i don't know if you've seen peter blake who his he did a series of fictional wrestlers because he really loves wrestling and he did a series of fictional ones where he sort of brought out a lot of the homoerotic things and the colorfulness um and he did this BBC documentary with a wrestler called Kendo Nagasaki which is worth watching it it's great um and that just sort of went in my brain really early on in lockdown and I started looking into wrestling and costume and performance and alter egos and all that kind of thing and then I just thought what well, I need to do a project that combines like textile stuff and dressing up and performance and music and drawing what can I do and then I thought, right, if I invent these fictional wrestlers, 
stealing from Peter Blake, obviously, <laughs> but make my own and then make them outfits. So they've all got their own different, um, you know, made from the ground up with matching earrings, by the way, uh, female wrestlers as well. So, um, so they've all got their own outfits. They've all got their own entrance music. <laughs> and then I wanted to draw them as well. And the idea is that after when we're allowed to mix more, that I would get other women to model. So it's not just me modeling um modelly outfits and do some like hilarious you know trash talking videos and wrestling each other but in a very camp and like non non-sexualized way really I know it's like a crochet gimp but when I think of female wrestlers unfortunately I was watching all um like WWE in the in the 90s and it was just all fake boobs and all this kind of thing it's a bit better than that now but I want to do a kind of a retro um yeah just really camp um knitting and crochet based <laughs> thing and then I just thought that will keep me busy um because it takes a while to crochet these I'll have to compose I'll have to think of who who is the person compose the entrance music it'll just it'll keep me busy <laughs> so and that had a really nice response actually I put out a thing on my Instagram saying if you would want to uh, model this um get in touch and I just thought no one is gonna get in touch who and loads of women replied um so that's been really nice um I've, I found it difficult making new friendships or creative connections online I'm ne I've never been a really good online person but I have actually made some friends um and you know worked and collaborated with people that I would never have worked with under normal circumstances so that's been I don't want to say that there's been anything good about this situation, but <laughs> the, <laughs> there's been things that have come to my mind or that I've had time to work on or people I've, had, I've spoken to and worked with that I wouldn't have had time to or necessarily wanted to work with before. So that's interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you've, you, you know, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't think of any better use of anyone's time. Really. Um, it's such a brilliant, brilliant project. Um, so, are, have have you uh, personally or the band, have you made any kind of plans for coming out of this or are you just kind of playing it uh, week by week, seeing, seeing how things emerge? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because it's not just, a lot changes in a year, um, as well as the global situation. Um, people, individual band members have had different uh, you know one's gone off away to uni then we've had like people's jobs have changed so they might not have time so I've just been very open-minded and accepting about what might happen or what different shapes Gigi might have to take or how different you know how our expectations might have to change because it was really full-on before lockdown it was really it was really full-on and that was going well it had a it had momentum but now that momentum stopped and then a year later, people's lives change. Um, you know, I never want to not be causing a, 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 a racket with my friends somewhere on a stage, <laughs> like especially in Teesside. So, you know, we'll, we'll be about in some incarnation, but it just feels, you know, like I say, for the first six months, I just couldn't even think about trying to plan anything because the constant, um, moving of goalposts was just heartbreaking because you'd be like okay uh you know we'll 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 do this then so like me and Sophie from Gigi we were just going to go and do like a little two-piece thing um and then you know we couldn't then we weren't even allowed to band practice so and then I've been getting really annoyed at bands who were breaking like breaking the rules to band practice even if they've been safe just purely because I'm jealous because <laughs> because I want to band practice but um so yeah just really yeah, we're going to have to just have a big check in with each other. It's been really, we've barely even talked about the band because we're more concerned about each other as as people, how we're doing. Um, you know, I was devastated at first, but then I was like, this is this is bigger than the band. And like I say, we were never on a course to mainstream fame anyway. So it's not like we've lost out anything like that. Uh, we're, you know, and a lot of musicians are in the, the, the same position where they've just had to try and fight this creative block of not being able to be around other people which a lot of the time is what you know triggers things happening and thoughts coming and songs being made so yeah we're just gonna take it easy and 
be just very calm about how we bring things back, even though inside I know we'll all be just dying to stomp around on the stage as soon as possible. I think we should do like, a, not live aid, but you know, just get every single person in Teesside, like who's who's in a weird band on stage at, at the same time, because we're all going to be so eager to do it. But we won't have anything to, like, well, we might have projects to go. I've got a couple of things on the go, but like, obviously things need practicing. You can't, you can't, you can collaborate with people online, but you can't fake practicing in a in face to face with somebody. So, I'll be really interested to see what new does come out of this, um, and you know, people going from just playing to themselves in the bedroom or streaming to actually being on the stage again. It's going to be so exciting and strange. Yeah. Well, my main, my the, the main thing that I want to do is at the end of this, like as soon as we get out to put on a, an all day and all night event at the auxiliary, uh, where all 250 people involved in the interview process uh, contribute in some way. Uh, I love it. Yeah, so, so all we, on stage, just at different times. <laughs> yeah, we just start off, you know, quite sensible, like workshops and seminars and that kind of thing, and then move into performance and then just like a big fuck off party. Like I want to reinvent the hitman and her. Um, <laughs> it's going to be the her man and him. I, it's like I'm going to be Pete Waterman. I've got I don't know if you know Simon Shaw. He's like like young little pretty boy. So he's he's, he's very talented as well, but he's like very pretty. So he's going to be like my little Michaela Strachan. Um, so that so. <laughs> going to be live and direct the whole time like interviews with people from studio 23 and then like uh, uh beaming out the live performances and then at the end like when everyone's twatted just me stumbling around with a pint sort of uh with, with the with the lovely simon just talking to people off their heads so that, i love this i love it it's the chaos that's, that we need <laughs> that's my hope and dream i'm gonna leave it there if that's okay with you um, yeah that's been absolutely brilliant. Thanks so much for this. I'm kind of uh, buzzing for, for seeing you and um, and uh, hopefully maybe see you um, via Zoom at uh, the Red Room uh, this weekend. Yeah, lovely to speak to you. Thank you for having me and hopefully right. see you at the weekend. <laughs> Anytime. Toodle pip. Bye.